for the new chapter, Resources and Development. What does the term resource mean? Anything that is available in nature to go ahead and satisfy our needs. The term resource, to understand it simply, water is a resource, the solar energy is a resource. All these things being a resource are limited and scarce. So it is very important that we go ahead and use our resources in a very feasible manner to go ahead and ensure that all our wants are satisfied. In simpler terms, you can understand resource as a free gift of nature to us. Resources can be classified. It can be classified on the basis of origin, on the basis of exhaustibility, on the basis of development, and on the basis of ownership. Let's come down to origin. When we come down to origin, it, uh, it can be further divided into two factors, that is abiotic and abiotic. And abiotic. Now the term biotic means living organisms. So the plant life that we see, the animals, human beings, all of these come under biotic. Let's come down to abiotic. Abiotic means non-living things. The roads, the bridges, the houses that we have, the rocks, the stones or the sands. All these are abiotic things because they do not breathe. Let's come down to the second classification of exhaustibility. The second classification can be further divided into renewable and non-renewable. Renewable resources are, are renewed or reproduced by physical or chemical or mechanical processes like the solar energy or the wind energy, the water or the forest. All these are renewed or they are replaced. The second subdivision is non-renewable items or non-renewable resources. The non-renewable resources can be, for, can be understood simply something that cannot be renewed or the renewal process basically takes a longer period of time, probably hundreds or millions of years, like the minerals or the fossil fuels. We might have recently heard there is a problem with the supply of petroleum because it is a fossil fuel and it takes numerous years to go ahead and produce that fossil fuel. The third type of natural resource is classified on the basis of the status of development. Again, it is further classified or further subdivided into four. That is potential resources, developed resources, stock and reserves. Potential reserves are basically reserves for, found in a particular region, but they are not utilized. In simpler terms, you might have, uh, say for example, 10,000 pocket money in the view, but you don't know how to use it. So it is a potential resource. You can use that to go ahead and probably buy a nice phone or, or probably a tab, anything that you would like to do, or probably you want to buy. This is what it means by potential resources. Developed resources. Resources, they are surveyed and their quality and quantity have been determined for utilization. Now, uh, you have, uh, say for example, uh, your mom, your, both your parents happen to be working together. Now, what you do, you put the, probably when your mom makes up a family budget for the month, she might survey both their incomes, they, she will try to go ahead and put it together and understand what she has to buy throughout the month she determines the quality. When it comes to quantity, she will say, okay, I want to buy this particular product or this particular uh, thing for X, Y, G, kgs, and that should be sufficient for the whole month. Let's come down to stock. Stock means reserves in the environment that can satisfy human needs, needs. but we do not have the technology to go ahead and use this. Let's come down to your family budget. Now, you might have a stock, say, of 20,000 remaining every month out of your family income. Out of this 20,000, you do not know how can this 20,000 can be utilized. Or probably you might not have the required technology. Say, uh, you might be saving this 20,000 and you want to buy a house. But that 20,000 might not be sufficient to go ahead and buy a house because you need a larger amount. 
So this will stay into your stock because you cannot use it right now. The next thing that comes down is the reserve. Reserve is again a subset of stock which can be put to use but, but that can be done only with the technical know-how and that probably is not available and that has to be developed in near future. The next subdivision of natural resources is ownership. It's very simple to understand that because it is divided into four divisions, individual, community owned, national and international. Individual, that's, let's go to that. Individual is anything and everything that is owned by an individual. Probably you own a bike, I own a house. These are all individual resources. Community owned. The term community means probably a particular society or the place where you live. The whole community might own a community ground or a community garden. This is what is meant by community owned. The third one is national resources. The forest, wildlife, all these are national resources. Political boundaries and oceanic areas up to 12 nautical miles, that is 19.2 kilometers from the coast, that is the territorial water. That is what is considered as the national ownership or the national resources. The last one on the list is the international ownership or the international resources. Ocean resources beyond 200 nautical miles belong to open ocean and belong to the international territory or the individual uh, international boundaries and no country can go ahead and actually take up responsibility or they cannot claim the ownership on such properties or such oceans. Before we go ahead with the next thing, let us understand what does a fossil fuel mean. Fossil fuel is basically buried combustible biological deposits of organic materials and that actually happens because of decayed plants and animals. Over a period of time, probably hundreds and millions of years, it is converted into crude oil, natural gas and coal. And that is what we use to go ahead and run our day-to-day -day lives. The CNG is used in our cars, the petrol is used in our cars. All these things actually help us to move ahead in our day-to-day -day lives. The next thing that we're going to discuss about is the sustainable development. The textbook talks about sustainable economic development, which means the development should take place without damaging the environment. And the development in the present should not compromise with the needs of the future generation. What does that mean? A sustainable development basically means, let me give you an example to understand this better. If we have to ensure that we have a better future, we might just go ahead and uh, build bridges. Like for an instance, we recently constructed the Eastern Expressway that connects Chengdu to CST, right? What happened? On the way, they actually cut down many trees. They constructed that bridge. The flying right from, if the journey from Chengdu to CST comes down to 12 minutes. But for that, what did they do? They cut down many trees. They were actually asked many people to, get, to leave their houses, to surrender those houses. But what happened? We got a nice bridge. It cuts down on our journey time. But still, in the long run, the amount of trees that were present to cut down the um, gases emitted from the Mahul area, which is again a chemical area, is not there. So in short, what we are doing is we are creating an air pollution. We do not have any other way to go ahead and control that air pollution. As we all know that plants, they breathe and when they breathe, they absorb carbon dioxide that is present in the air atmosphere and they exhale oxygen, which is very vital for human beings, which is not there. There's a lot of indiscrimination when people utilize or use the existing resources that we have and we face major problems because of it. What happens? The first one and the major one is depletion of resources for satisfying the needs of some greedy individuals. There was an article that I read recently. What happened? There was one minister 
In fact, most of the ministers do this. When they are in power, probably any ruling party, what they generally do is, they probably buy out a land, a land that is not even developed. They buy it at 10 paise per acres. It's that cheap. What do they do with it? They buy it, then they, over a period of time, they might not develop it then and there, but over a period of time, they develop that hilly area. When they develop that hilly area, they ensure there is electricity, there is water supply, there is a provision for people to stay. But for all these provisions to be made, what do they do? They have to cut trees. There, there are trees which are cut because of which there is again a lot of problems. Because of which the humidity increased. Then this particular place is converted to a picnic spot or probably a holiday home. Then the next thing that they also do is, let's uh, go to the point from your textbook that says accumulation of resources in few hands. To understand this simply, let me ask you a question. Can you or me buy such a hill to make it into a hill station? We can't, right? Because that will uh, um, ask us a lot of money. That will demand a lot of money. But do we have that? We don't, right? So what happens? People who are already into uh, power, the entrepreneurs or the businessmen or probably the people who are uh, into the ruling party, they might just go ahead and buy these things, these places, and they develop it so as to ensure they have a very good future. But because of all these things, the depletion of resources, the deforestation that takes place, what happens? There is global warming. When it comes to global warming, the glaciers are melting. When the glaciers are melting, there is a problem with the amount of river, the water in the rivers. Then there is humidity that increases. There is rainfall in any season. Like what happened two, three months back in Mumbai was, we had rainfall in winter season, which is actually not a good sign. Then we have the ozone layer that depletes the because of which the harmful ultraviolet rays from the sun reaches Earth. Th there are chances that people might get cancer. Then there is environmental pollution. There is land degradation. The environment might be polluted in various ways to go ahead and because of land, water, contamination. Then the land is degraded. The quantity or the quality of crops that we have actually is bad. It's not that good enough. Rio de Janeiro, your textbook talks about the Rio de Janeiro Earth Summit 1992. In June 1992, more than 100 heads of states met in Rio de Janeiro in Brazil for the first International Earth Summit. What did they do out there? They adopted global forest principles and the Agenda 21 that actually helps in achieving sustainable development in the 21st century. But the question that you might feel is, what is Agenda 21? It is the declaration signed by the world leaders in 1992 at the United Nations Conference on Environment and Development. It is basically an agenda to fight environmental damage, diseases that actually are into the nature or the environment because we do not take care of our mother nature. And we have to come to on to meet on a mutual grounds to go ahead and sort out this problem and fight this problem. One of the major objective of Agenda 21 is that every local government should draw its own local Agenda 21 to fight the environment issues on their own based on their own climatic conditions or the kind of relief that they have. The next topic that we're talking up, we're going to talk about is resource planning. Planning basically is a widely accepted strategy. If we have two people working in our house, what do we do? We put their incomes together. We plan how are we going to go ahead and use this money to pay off our expenses. Probably if you have a total of 40000 in with you, you might say, OK, I have to go ahead and pay 10000 towards my home loan, this for my mobile bills, this for my car loan. All this is divided rest of it, you keep it for yourself. In the same manner, India has diverse resources. India has resources at different locations and different states actually give us different resources. For example, 
Madhya Pradesh has minerals and coal deposits and Arunachal Pradesh has water. But they both lack in infrastructural development. They do not have the necessary infrastructure. Ladakh, they have a cultural heritage. Many people love to go out there. But it lacks water and infrastructure. The next point we're talking about is resource planning specifically in India. Choose the right kindergarten, a right bag, and matching bottle to go with, the right school, the right friends. Choose the right subjects and score well. Be an expert in all. The right teacher. And make sure that they like you. Choose the right timing. The right bus. And take a cab if getting late. The right train. And don't stand near the gates. Mind the pocket. Better get into ladies' compartment. And make sure your moustache hasn't started coming. Choose the right study time and forget games. IPL, IHL, rock and metal, guitar, axe. The right group. And be a model to your brother. Seriously. Choose the right syllabus. The right test paper. Keep guessing questions for exams. Choose the right branch. The right college. The right stream. Choose the right career. Lucky to have a father's business to take care of and a father to allow that. The right counselor. The right form and make sure the project is submitted on time. Choose the right website. And rely on your friends for more information. Oblivious of the sites they have been to, there is no end to your woes. Getting better with every step you climb up the ladder. The summer vacations shorter, the bucket list bigger, the night darker, the books heavier. The only light you have is your friends ahead of you. Probably he is right. Ever thought how he got the direction? No more spending your energy and money on coaching classes. No more missing classes for rain, rally and nonsense. Get your interest back in subjects through our creative ways of teaching. Doubts, concepts, applications, all explained through one vibrant animation. Subjects covered by multiple teachers with repeat telecast. Special programs only for basic foundation and paper analysis. Personality development, career counseling, admissions, hobbies, all covered. A new approach to study with long-term perspective. So sit back comfortably in your homes and watch Study Spectrum TV channel. identification and inventory of resources across various regions of the country. Let's take it for example, you live in a nuclear family, right? And you have your mom that's working, your dad that's working, and your elder brother or a sister might be working. What do they do? They first identify what all resources they have, that is their monthly income. Now, they try to the first survey to understand how much money can each one of them put chip in towards the family. Then they map out as to how much money can be ex used to go ahead and satisfy the family needs. The quality and quantity is estimated. Say for example, you want to buy a TV or an LCD. You might say, okay, this XYZ is brand is very good. It has that quality. So you might go for that, but you also have to take into consideration, do you have that amount of money with you? The, again, then comes the quantity. Say, for example, for a people of four people in a family, 10 kgs of rice might be sufficient. So the quantity is estimated. Then the appropriate technology and skill is important. As I gave you an example, the TV has to be bought. You have to purchase a television or an LCD. What do you do? You need to have that technology for a few years down the line, probably 10 to 15 years down the line. What used to happen is 
if we have to buy a LC, sorry um, a TV, we used to just go shop around at the nearby places and we used to try to find the best deals. But with the latest development in technology, we have online deals. If you have to buy an LCD, you might just call up any local phone directly and try to find out the best deals with them. At the same time, you might also want to check the online deals available. And then you can use the resource to go ahead and satisfy your needs. Then you have to match the resource development plans with the national development plan. When it comes to people who are at uh, at a higher thing, probably a uh, uh, place wherein they have a status, you cannot just have any uh, small, say for example, there's an actor. When an actor travels, he, he might see him or her probably buying a nice car, uh, probably a BMW or Mercedes or an Audi or a Jaguar. They can't go into a Wagoner, right? So you have to maintain that status. So you have to ensure that your state resources are matched with the national development according to your status so that overall growth is important. You also have to understand one single point and the very important point is if you have resources available with you and if you do not have the existing or technology skill set or the technology or the existing skill set that is required, you cannot go ahead and satisfy human needs or you cannot expect that particular region or that particular country to develop. Let's move on to the next topic that is land utilization. Now, land resources basically, land again is considered as a resource, a very vital resource. Because of land, we stand here. Where do, how do we understand what is a land resource? Forest. That is again a land resource. Then there is land that is not available for cultivation, that is not available for farming. Then there are barren or infertile lands. Then there are wastelands. What do you mean by wasteland? An empty area of land, probably that is um, near a city or a village where it is not used to grow crops. Then we go on to the third one, a land that is not put to agricultural use. What does that mean? Probably we use that to go ahead and build factories, roads, buildings. Next one that comes in is the uncultivated land. But this does not include the fallow land. What all are included in the uncultivated land is permanent pastures or the grazing grounds when actually the cattle can feed. The second one that comes is the land under miscellaneous tree crop grows which is not included in the zone area, in the net zone area. The third one is the culturable wasteland. A culturable wasteland is an uncultivated land that is left like that for over more than five agricultural years. Then the fourth one under the land resources come are the fallow lands. Then in that there are two subdivisions. One is a current fallow and other than current fallow. The first one, current fallow, means left without cultivation for one or less than one agricultural year. And other than current fallow, there is land left uncultivated for the past one to five years. So you have to understand the difference between culturable wasteland, current fallow, and other than current fallow. The easier way to understand is current fallow is left without cultivation for one or less than one agricultural year. Other than current fallow is, it is an uncultivated land for one to five agricultures here and culturable wasteland is uncultivated for more than five agricultural years. Then the net zone area, you need to know what is the net zone area. Area zone, there is a basically formula that they use. It is the area zone more than once in an agricultural year plus the net zone area. That is what is known as the gross cropped area. And if you use it the other way, the gross cropped area is net zone, uh, area zone more than once in an agricultural year, less the net zone area. Let's move on to the land use pattern in India. 
the use of land is basically depends upon the kind of climate, the kind of soil that we have, and there are human factors, then there's a technology and their skill set that is into existence. So based on that, generally people use the land that exists in their surroundings. Land resources. Land is again a natural resource and it is very important. Land is limited but our needs are unlimited. It supports natural vegetation, it supports life, it supports wildlife, then it also supports all economic activities. If there was no land, would you, would you ever imagine traveling from destination A to destination B? It would have been difficult. It also helps into the communication system. Uh, probably uh, the towers, the mobile towers, those are erected on the land. It is an asset, basically, that we have to use very carefully. But it has a finite magnitude, so it means that it is definite, it is limited. So you have to use it carefully, and it has to be done with planning. The existing land resources that we have, 43% of it is used, of the plain area is used for agriculture and industry. 30% of the mountains are helpful to go ahead and ensure there is a perennial flow of the rivers and it also helps us for the tourism that generates revenue towards the country. 27% of the Pakhi region is very rich in minerals, fossil fuels and forest area. Let's talk about land degradation. The next topic that we are going to discuss about is the land use pattern in India. How do you identify which kind of land has to be used for what? The use of land in India is determined by various factors based on the climate, based on the soil that is available, based on the human factors with the technology know-how. Uh, for an instance, India has the largest population of cattle. As what happens if we do not have the grazing grounds? If we do not have the grazing grounds for them, how can we go ahead and feed the cattle? According to the provisions made, 33% of the geographical area should be covered under forest. But if you look at the facts and figures, it is less than for 33% that is supposed to be there. The biggest problem out here is we, as human beings, what we're doing is we're just doing, uh, cutting off trees. When we do that, there are cattle, there is a human, uh, there is a life cycle or there is a food chain that is being disrupted. Now, if we have the current fallow land, the if we try to go ahead and cultivate that or try to put that to use, what happens is the quality of soil is poor. So if we have to cultivate crops, what has to be done? There's a high cost because we have to go ahead and use a lot of fertilizers and a lot of irrigation and XYZ facilities to go ahead and make that cultivable. Now, the fa current fallow land can go ahead and be cultivated or we can go ahead and do farming on it once or twice in three, two to three years. So again, it's a time consuming as well as a cost consuming. <laughs>